story in this show is called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole because we like to go into topics more deeply. Today we're going to go into the topic of occupying the media. And we're here at the Yippie Cafe, which is 9 Bleecker Street. And 9 Bleecker Street, the Yippie Cafe, has quite a history for getting a message out to the media. But the history that most people know about versus the history as it actually came down might be a little different. So today, uh, we were hoping to sit with a lot of people to decide where Occupy the Media's actual space would be. And it was decided 7 o'clock on Bleecker Street at the Yippie Cafe, but at the last minute something must have changed because it says that it's closed for air conditioning repairs. But we public access producers who've been at this for like decades, I'm happy to say we have Joe Friendly behind the camera, sort of keep pressing on with our message no matter what. We just sort of roll up our sleeves and get down to it. Now I'm totally thrilled. We should be looking at the end. No, no, I was going in for the reflection in the oh, window. Okay, the reflection. Okay. I'm so thrilled to introduce to my audience formally Joe Elmo, who we met on camera at Vargas show. I think she calls it Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Vargas? Yeah, I was on it twice. I'm not, I know it's Apocalypse something or other. Yeah, we, have, we just happen to be on that show. And as soon, as soon as Joe Barton and I heard his song and the words, we, uh, we, just, we just loved it. I'm glad they did because I was there um, just on, a, I called the day before and then she said, come on in and have another guest. And when I met Joe and you, Paula, and I, I hadn't even met you, everything you were saying was like ringing through why I wrote the song to begin with and right. how I feel. Right. And uh, I think with Joe's message and your message about occupying the courts, it's exactly what we need. We need to occupy space, but we have to focus on the courts so we can only beat them legally. Otherwise, we're, we're you know, we're, pardon my you know, expression, we're, we're kicking ourselves in the shin. Because we can't get them, you know, we have the numbers and the guns, they're going to be able to beat us. And there's no reason for violence any, anyway. We advocate for, um, you know, a peaceful revolution. And I think we're going to win. Peaceful revolution, all right! Now, one of the things I think that's really important about peace is to make sure that people have an opportunity to progress. And I think to create a healthy economy uh, and a healthy media, you need to have the media supported, not just by people who are watching it, but the people who are creating it will look at what's behind. Now, for example, we needed two chairs, so I went to Portino, which is the restaurant right next door, and they have these nice chairs, and they have chains on them, and for sure, you know, they want people to come in and enjoy their restaurant. And I've spoken to a couple of the people, and they will eat here regularly, they really like the restaurant, but I didn't know if they were into the Occupy the Wall Street energy, if they wanted you playing the guitar right, and complaining right. and all of that. Sure. But I'm thinking, so, so one of the people that came out and said how much they love the restaurant said, go ahead and ask them for the chairs, you know, these are pretty progressive people. And if you zoom in on the chairs with high definition, you can see these chairs have a certain patina to them. And that means there's a certain history. This, this whole place, the Yippie Cafe, is just like dripping with patina. Mm -hmm. But what would be really nice is if you find the actual voices of people that were here. The owner of the building, Dana Beale, unfortunately right now is in prison somewhere in Chicago. Wow. In Illinois, on a marijuana charge. Of course, on marijuana charge. Unbelievable. And that's why, when you were watching us at Hurley Court, can you kind of give your account of what you saw me and Joe do, and Joe sure. Friendly sure. can ask questions because he absolutely he went Any to the questions. same law school that Obama went to, so he's oh, is that right? Mind. Well, congratulations. He taught it. Well, what I what I witnessed was it was my first time I'm going to a court event, you know, an actual formal event to to Joe. And and Paula had to go to court. And um, he had told me in advance that he had papers um, written up already and he felt he was going to be successful. But again, we know, we don't, it's, a, it's the United States of America and we go into our courts, who knows? Because they, the, they have the gavel and they got the guns and they got the, they got the, the uniforms. It's a nice combination. So when Joe walked in with, there was a crowd of us, there was, um, from, and we're from the Woodstock area side, it was, and, um, when we walked in, we sat down, we bought a pad, we wanted to no take notes, and Joe was announced to the um, judge that he was, his papers were in order, he, that he 
this, he doesn't want to dismiss the lawyers, the attorneys that were appointed to him by this court because he doesn't recognize this court has any um, what jurisdiction. jurisdiction over Joe because he, want, he, he claims to be a sovereign. And he is. I mean, <laughs> he read a lot of Supreme Court laws or, or rulings. It's obvious he's well read because when, when he announced this, I looked at the judge and the judge was staring at Joe trying to intimidate him. Joe made, and when, when Joe's response was, uh, Paula and I are now leaving the court after he made the announcement such as, this is an illegal um, proceeding, you have no jurisdiction over me. I don't know if, it, if we said Paul and I are now leaving, it, because as I remember it, because it was a very emotional event, mm -hmm. and I, Joe and I never even discussed or even considered no, I, walking I out. You did to the judge, I remember. No, 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 My I don't. My heart started pounding. I, no, no, I understand, <laughs> but what I remember is when he didn't acknowledge that when we said we want to correct a mistake that we made, we right. made a mistake when mm -hmm. we said we're firing the lawyers. Right. Because how That's could what, how could we fire those whom we never hired? So it's obvious we didn't hire them. So they're not working for us. So since, since you hire them, you fire them because we're not going a, along with lawyers. And then Joe said the prosecutor has failed to establish jurisdiction because no hard party has come forward. And when the judge said he was going to move along anyway, as I remember it, Joe, we didn't even look at each other. We just instantly knew. How can you move on having appointed people that we never gave consent for you to appoint? How can you move on when there's no crime here, there's no harm party? But even on the statutory level, I've since learned, if you actually look at it, possession of marijuana was repealed in 1986. What they get you for is knowingly and willfully possessing with intention to distribute. Yes. Well, we had, a, we had an ounce of pot. We had about an ounce of oil that I was using for a lump in my breast that, that is moving along very nicely, by the way. Thank God. Uh, we feel that part of the reason with cannabis being such a problem is that in 1974 at the University of Virginia, they did studies showing that the brain tumors in the rats were going away. Mm -hmm. that the cancerous tumors. But yeah. later on, the media sort of covered it up and said that marijuana destroys brain cells. They didn't say it destroyed the cancerous brain cells. So there, there you have it. That's what happened. 1.30 in the morning, we have a tail light out. I'm, I'm dragged out of the car, beat on the, on the hood of the police car. And since he has a video camera, and he was wearing a mic, and I had a tape recorder, we've got three pieces of evidence now that will say what you said when we left. They went ahead in this kangaroo hearing without us, without us giving consent that these attorneys were speaking our, on our behalf. And now you take over because we left. We don't know the story. What when, happened when, both, when the policeman when you, took the stand? When Joe and, uh, and, and, and Paul left, um, he, the judge annou announced to the, the, prosecution, not the prosecution, the uh, defense attorneys, that I don't know how to proceed I really don't know how to proceed with this because he doesn't. He wants me to fire you. I'm not going to fire you, terminate you as as, uh, as their lawyers. And if he wants to, he can. But he did mention. But he told me that he's not going to um, participate in this um, court. So I, I that Joe that Joe Mr. Barton would not participate with his wife in these proceedings. So he says I really it's a first. He did it's a first for me. So I don't know how to advise you. you use your own judgment. Give your attorneys and. He went to the prosecution, you have a witness in the prosecution. He said, yes, they called the police officer. The police officer came up, and what I noticed, and I have to say this, I told Joe and uh, Paul personally before this, you know, before this interview, that I noticed I was going to get up and walk a follow and follow because Joe said, let's go, and I figured, uh, right. you know, the time was up. But when I saw the judge, he's, he started to bat his eyes and kind of look befuddled. And I, he, was, he looked befuddled, and I said, Wow, this is interesting. So I was about four feet from my chair. I turned around, I sat down, and that's when I started hearing, you know, the, the, his direction to your, your attorneys, your your, your club attorneys, their attorneys that they wanted to hire for you that you have, you don't that you dismiss. You didn't, uh, no, pardon me, that you wouldn't you didn't need to dismiss because you didn't hire. He started addressing them. Then the prosecution brought a witness, and when the police officer spoke, he was nervous. He he was not used to it either. And it, it felt, as a citizen and, and somebody that has an insight into people when, they, when they're speaking the truth, I'm a good listener. 
I felt he was lying. He said he tried to climb out the window and he had to restrain you. And I said to myself, what woman is going to start screaming out the window? <laughs> and I've met Paula. She seems very intelligent and 100% stable. I don't think you want to climb out a window. You know, in matter if you're going to get out and defend your husband, you're going to open the door. <laughs> now, what I remember myself saying is, I don't know who you are. I'm afraid of you. And that will be on my tape recorder. Now, they should have given me a written subpoena if that tape recorder was going to be used as evidence. But I was in ignorance. I didn't know that when they said, we need this as evidence for their, uh, yeah. their courts of limited jurisdiction. I should have said, I need this for evidence for me, and I'm happy to give this up as evidence upon receipt of a written subpoena. So people out there in television land, start learning law. It will really help you. As much as I knew, I didn't know enough on December 22nd. I have sent by registered mail a request, a demand actually, a demand for my tape recorder to be returned within 10 days. That 10 days has lapsed and now I need to go to a higher jurisdiction so I'll probably go somewhere to the, human, uh, to the United Na Nations for Human Rights uh, Abuses because if you're dragged into courts and they're not saying what the crime is, they're not saying who the harm party is, they're not establishing their jurisdiction, then your rights are being violated. You, you have a right to know, have a bill of particulars, what have I done and who have I harmed? And that's what's so glaringly absent in these cases. Now what we have learned by standing on the shoulders of giants, I always say, there's a whole network of, of internet community, people sharing uh, court war stories all over the country, and we've learned a lot from them. And one thing we've learned is that we're brought into these courts as uh, foreign enemy residents, and they're military courts. And in order to be in these courts properly, first of all, all the people in the courts should be in military uniform, but they're not. And they should be, if we are real Americans under the Constitution, they should extradite us properly through the State Department before we're there, stripped of our rights. That's why when Joe, a few times before, asked the judge, does this court recognize Supreme Court rulings? There was a dead silence. The judge didn't answer. Our people were upset, but even other people there for other cases were shocked. I mean, really, a ripple of shock goes through the court. Well, if this court doesn't recognize Supreme Court rulings, what is this court? Who are you? So back to the policeman, when I said, I don't know who you are, it was really scary. It's 1.30 in the morning. He's all outfitted in a very scary way. He's a big, tall guy anyway. And he has just uh, abused my husband's rights because when he said, go sit in my car, I mean, Joe might come and speak out what he said actually. No, you're himself. doing fine. Go ahead. He said, um, I choose not to sit in your car if I'm not under arrest. Am I under arrest? The policeman would never say he was under arrest. He kept saying threatening things like, go sit in my car or I'm going to handcuff you and put you there. That is not really an answer to, am I under arrest? Go sit in my car or I will put handcuffs on and put you there. Which is eventually what he did because there was quite a few passes. We, we have studied, we knew our rights pretty well. Of course, I didn't know that they needed a written subpoena to get my video camera. And of course, you're sitting there all being tortured, you know, I mean, thumbprint after sure. thumbprint after thumbprint, yes. hours are going by. Finally, you go before a magistrate. You're hoping that you don't have a high bail, right? So you're trying to be cooperative. But trying to be cooperative should not be construed as consent. So we never signed anything, and we always were claiming, you know, what was the crime. And I, even to the judge, Judge Parker, I said, I don't know why I'm here. And his feeble answer was, uh, you were arrested for breaking some statute. But when Joe said statutes do not apply to sovereigns, he was very specific. He read many, many Supreme Court rulings saying that persons should not be construed to be a living flesh and blood human being. So they're taking us into these courts of limited jurisdiction. They're not hearing anything that we're saying, nor our paperwork, because we are regarded as corporations. And by turning us into corporations, we have to have somebody speak for us. That's why they kept, they always keep trying to push lawyers on. But I knew for sure I didn't want a lawyer, and by getting rid of the lawyer, 
there's nobody to transfer the charges to because when they said, do you understand the charges, what they really mean is a Black's Law Dictionary definition. Do you stand under these charges? Have you accepted the charges? Right. We did not accept the charges. We did not make a plea. If you plea not, if you plea guilty, obviously you're screwed and you're in their game. But even if you plead not guilty, if the prosecutor says you're guilty and you say you're not guilty, there's now a contest and now you need a judge because a judge has to decide if you're guilty or not guilty. Other than somebody uh, pleading guilty or not guilty, you need to have a harmed party come forward to say I was harmed in this and that way and then the prosecutor prosecutes on your, on your behalf. But to say that the prosecutor is prosecuting on behalf of the people of the state of New York, really he's prosecuting on the behalf of a corporation whose name is the people of the state of New York. This is not an Article III constitutional court, and that's what we're seeking out. And that's why every time we go into court, we're beginning to suspect that this court itself is where you need to be to turn it around to say, well, if you're not going to tell me who has been abused, let us set the record straight and we'll, we will say we have been abused. So perhaps we're the ones who should be establishing jurisdiction, but you know, maybe others who know more than me can say more than that. If I may speak? Yes. I believe... Uh, maybe come closer. This is more I really believe that we're, we're in trouble. By, by, just by the circumstances that you, that you underwent with, with um, your husband, Joe. Also, also we have, there's a gentleman out who was um, murdered by Fulton, 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 Fulton Police in California. And my keyboard player, George Price, sent me a videotape about a week ago. The man was schizophrenic. He was homeless. He had a place, but he was he was in the street. He didn't realize where he was. They asked him where he slept. He said in a in a trash can. And they started saying, "What are you, a warrants guy? What are you doing here? We seen you here before." And out of out of nowhere, they started striking this man. They beat him to death. It's on it's on videotape. I think it was 18 minutes long. The original tape. Now there's two people who stand on trial for murder. Two police officers. But there were six um, law enforcement agents, cops, um, beating this man, and the man was begging for his life, he was schizophrenic, he was crying for his mother and father, he had no idea where he was, because he was, episode, he was having an episode of um, uh, hallucinations, I'm sure, and it's, I mean, it, it's a, there's a difference between being beaten to death and our, and our rights being beaten to death, but I feel your rights and Joe's rights and my rights on certain uh, certain events that happen, even when they stop you for a traffic violation, the way they speak to you, it's, it's, it's aggression, it's not, they're not serving for attacking Yeah, anyone. but I think the aggression is part of the psychological conditioning to get you to give up it's, it's, your consent. You give them your consent because you feel so hopeless, you feel so helpless. I mean, as horrible as it was to be beaten on his hood of his car, I mean, he really smashed me on there. And the video dash camera is going to show this. Now, Joe, my husband, says that they are going to destroy this evidence. But then I would like to remind people that when we outfit these SWAT teams with all the latest gadgets, shouldn't we make sure those gadgets work? And if they're not working, I mean, that, that should be reason right there to throw it out. But I, I simply want to move forward with this in integrity, in dignity, because I had no idea until this happened to me that this was going on and that rights were being so abused. I mean, I talk about rights all the time on my show. I would never, ever drive away. What, what the policeman is saying is that Joe is telling me to drive away. Where would I drive to? How, if I, if I went away, you know, one meter, I would be thinking about my husband. All I want to do is be with my husband. Why would I drive away? And I'll add to that. I never would have told my wife to drive away and take a chance at a police officer shooting her. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. I mean, that, that's the thing. We're, we're under duress throughout all of these proceedings. And when I tell people that we know the law, all we need are witnesses. Really and truly, when Joe and I were there, you were just as important. You being there, all of the other people that were sitting next to you, I was scared I when it. we left. I said, Joe, now it's going to happen. You know? Actually, Paula, I do see what the point that you're making. It's 
they're being exposed and there's other citizens that have nothing to do with that case witnessing that and they're a little bit uh, hesitant to act as aggressively or blatantly um, illegally in their own court because they feel like we have citizens that are concerned with other citizens and I think that's the way we really have to move this movement. Occupy Wall Street has to definitely connect and realize you just can't, we can't, and I'm all for, you know, filling the streets up. You know, don't get me wrong. But, and filling up Washington. I would love to see a middle class go march into Washington, D.C. with Occupy the Courts with Veterans for Peace in July, August, September. I'll go anytime with a bunch of group, a group of people. We're, we're being, we're, we're being led to, a, to the slaughter here with our rights taken away, the Patriot Law, the Patriot Act. The, you know all these these law enforcement for the home security it's it's they're, they're killing us and if we that's don't show we have, that's why we have to learn law because even yes. the patriot act we can make it to our advantage absolutely if we understand what they're doing if we like the patriot act means you can get into trusts right so now we can we can demand investigations of who are these people sure so when i told the policeman i don't know who you are you want me to point yeah, this way good. okay when I told the policeman I don't know who you are, that was really sincere. Who, who do these people work for? They're not working for the taxpayers. Exactly. If they're taking an oath of office to uphold the Constitution, that, you know, people have told me, oh, the Constitution doesn't mean much, Paula, because you need a contract both ways. But what you do is you say, I accept your oath of office and I bind you to it. Yes. That means they accepted that they're protecting the Constitution, and you say, I accept that you've accepted. You right. know, I accept your oath of office, and I bind you to it. So well, that means now integrity. we have a contract integrity. running. Therefore, if the judge looked puzzled when we left, it was probably because what's he going to do when we clearly did not give consent? So when they say every single person in prison is there by consent, that's true, but they didn't quite understand how they there. They don't know when they gave it up. But it's we know. We it's know difficult because, right, when you know the law, it's difficult because when you don't know the law it, and you want to be respectful with, with the law enforcement, you know it's a tough, it's, right. it can be a tough job. There's a lot of people out there that want to harm these, you know, law enforcement. And I think we do need law enforcement, but I think we need to. We're law re practitioners, is what Shelley says. You want to get I'd force like that. out, you know. Yeah. You want to, a keeper of the peace because that's what I'd this like the term. is. is I, a law the practitioner. Peace is being threatened. And there's a, whole, there's, a, there's a whole new paradigm we have to look at with the advent of, of, of cameras, digital cameras, everybody has them, and now we notice, and the police have them on their car, and now, now he knows he acted illegally, if you were Joe, and they can't find it. That, those cameras are tested on a daily basis because they want to protect themselves, okay? Right. And they're lying to, to you right. and Joe when they're telling you, oh, it broke, or we can't find it. And they're lying to protect themselves. Well, they haven't themselves. given me mine back. And they, and they claim they're going to give it back, but they're saying that it'll be on the 21st, probably right before we go for our next special appearance. We always say we're here by special appearance, not general appearance. We're only here under threat of a bench warrant or, or, or I heard force, that. you know, I heard armed you police. That. They're very scary. So if, if you're worried about a bench warrant being put out, you're going to show up too. Sure. But it's not because of consent. It's not because we recognize their jurisdiction. Therefore, we feel that to move on, the moving on is proceeding in an unlawful manner. And what we want is for people to be lawful. We're, we don't think there's anything wrong with the system as long as the system goes by the rules. If it goes by the rules, we can have a healthy, prosperous society. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, I think, we, I think it, this nation has I, the ideals and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I think, ideally, it's a beautiful place to live. But in reality, with the courts being a corporation and then trying to uh, extradite and prosecute. They're not this extraditing us properly. Uh, incorrectly. If, 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 if we incorrectly. Should be, we should be extradited through the State Department in order to be then brought into these courts of limited jurisdiction. They're military courts. So you have to look at the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. And this is paperwork that were perfected, that was perfected by people who started to scrutinize the IRS because I think the IRS operates on a certain under a certain title that was never actually passed by Congress. Wow. So the, the, the fundamental problem is the corporation of the United States of America residing in the District of Columbia is a Delaware corporation, but it's illegal in that it has not registered 
in each of the 50 states where it practices business, because these are definitely courts of profit, they are not courts of honor. They're courts with Dun and Bradstreet numbers, they have benchmarks. You can definitely see in the privatization of prisons what's happening, and it's not just you know, $100,000 a year per prisoner, it's, it's the securitization and the bonding of, I thought, indictments, but I recently learned even warrants. As soon as some action is happening in these courts, it goes right out onto the money markets and they start betting on it. So that a felony is typically starts off as $4 million, it's turned into the first step of it being a financial instrument, it's valued at 40 million and then somebody starts off the promissory note by putting up say 20 percent of it so they might put up 16 million to kick it off then it's multiplied 200 to 300 percent when it's sold as a bank instrument until finally you're you're talking about each non-violent prisoner bringing in ten thousand dollars a day to the money markets this is why we have a declining economy and yet we endlessly go to war so if you're concerned about what is being done in your name as an American, follow the money. Please. You know, come down to the Yippie Cafe when we start to have meetings about this, about what it means to occupy the media, because part of occupying the media means elevating the people who are watching the media. Turn people not into sheep that are passive, that are frightened. Turn people into very informed people because the information is powerful. Uh, as I remember that day, Joe and I didn't even look at each other before we walked out. We just knew this is walkout time. I never said, Joe, should we do this? No, he said, Paula, come on. He may have said to the rest of you to follow us out because I was so into getting out of mode that I didn't turn behind me. But I'm glad that you didn't listen to him. I just say, stayed. Yeah, as you say that, I do remember in the moment, it was almost like a... Uh, you know, a pin dropped, and you and you both started walking. And then Joe turned around and asked to sleep. I was the only one that got up. Everybody was taking notes because I mean, I yeah, that's right. We hand out legal pads because again, even though we're supposed to have public trials and hearings, uh, these private courts set their own rules and they don't let cameras in. Them. So we told everybody we gave them legal pads to take notes. And I'm glad you did because in the shadow of, the, of their um, in the court, the shadow of the courtroom, I don't know what they're going to allow. As transcribed. Well, we know transcripts are changed. Because I believe Joe that. has another case I know, on appeal and very major, important. It might be only a couple words here or there, but they're very critical words. If two uh, people accuse a judge of treason in an open court, that has to be looked at, and that's exactly what what was done by Joe and Jay. But when the transcripts went up to Albany, that part was out. So. Um, but legal pants are important. But getting back again, it was a drop of the pen, and you did move, you know, in, in, you know, uh, uh, synchronized and walked right out. And I don't think it was any, you know, there was no plan. Yeah, we but, just knew our yeah, paperwork. It we was just right. knew that was, if, was, if, if right. he wouldn't recognize that we did not want these lawyers, there was no way we wanted these lawyers. We wanted to speak as sovereigns for ourselves. Joe read plenty of the court rulings saying that statutes do not apply to sovereigns. People should not roll their eyes in the back of their head and say, oh my God, Joe and Paula are martyrs. We are not martyrs. Every one of those Supreme Court rulings was a case where somebody bootstrapped their way out of a good old boy network, out of corruption, out of monopoly, to get up to the Supreme Court to get that ruling. So they only do it with trickery. If, if I might say, now that Paula and Joe have some loud. friends, Paula and Joe have some friends that I've heard that through them that they are thinking they were martyrs. I saw warriors, beautiful legal, um, a beautiful legal argument that Joe and uh, Paula exhibited. It was beautiful. I mean, it really, I wrote the song "Wall Street Bail Out Crucifixion," which was played obviously, right? And to see that, uh, I've never, I've never told Paula or Joe just how much of a joy. It was to see that. It was amazing. It was beautiful. Oh, you mean how the words of your song fit was, into our legal argument? Not even figuring out to fit into your legal argument. When I saw you actually act that out, you know, my my, my, my song is telling tell how frustrated I am and we are. But you actually did it in the court of law. Yeah. I'm much better. I got a much better feel than that than I when I played for in the bank for I, I played in America Bank of America on the. Um, 
April 15th for the Veterans for Peace. And I respect the Veterans for Peace, and I'm glad that, you know, they're advocating for peace. But let's advocate for justice. I mean, Joe Barton, his wife. Uh, but that's where you get peace. You get peace and progress. And people can be progressive. Yes. If they can pay their rent, you know, the mortgage, you know, all of these problems. If you look at it deeply, uh, wise legal people, wise judges should know that when due process is not given, the whole society is threatened. And that's, what, that's what's happening. And what we wanted to simply show is that we have powerful remedies. Joe and I are going in there, we're claiming our remedies, we're saying, come and join us in the, in the court. Do not be afraid. I mean, it, it should be scary, but it's not, because when you feel truth running, you, you know, it, it, you just, you aren't afraid. You sleep well. You know this is the way to go. Joe and I have discussed, if, if anything bad happens to us, we feel it would be even worse if we didn't speak out when we could, knowing what we do. I see that a lot of the occupiers, though, did not know law. They don't understand what false arrest and false imprisonment is. And as a result of being kind of psychologically beaten up and bullied, because that's what they were, it, it wasn't uh, lawful. If, if you're not disturbing the peace, if you're not harming anybody, they can't claim a misdemeanor. Even a misdemeanor is a bad crime, by the way. It's when somebody is actually being threatened, and that's why the policeman comes in there and arrest you without a warrant because there's some imminent danger. Somebody is going to be harmed right then and there, and the policeman has to stand in and arrest you, stop your free movement to protect somebody. I'm certain in most of these arrests, none of that was happening. But you can't tell people to be so nicey nice and tiptoeing around and don't vex anybody to the point that they that they're spineless to stand up for their rights because. They get taken to Rikers Island, they get lied to, they finally get out. It was such an unpleasant memory, they don't want to go back. Sure. And even me, when I walked out of the court, I said to Joe, now what's going to happen? And he goes, well, I don't know, I've never been here. My husband's been arrested and been to court about 20 times in his 40 years of being a drug activist. But he hadn't been to this place. And I said, Joe, now what's going to happen? And he goes, I don't know, we, we might be arrested. And I go, I don't want to be arrested because sure. I don't want to go through that again. No, you know, nobody does. And, nobody does. And so, and so I was going to go back in again, and Joe goes, but if you go back in, you're going to give them jurisdiction. I go, you're right. So it was like momentary insanity that I would have walked back in, and I had Joe, and we had the law. So I'm saying, all you people out there who were protesting and Occupy Wall Street, and you feel like not protesting anymore, I do not blame you. I have been there. I know what that feels like. That's why we need to have a community and a network where we learn law together and we support each other. We're asking people to come to our hearing on the 21st of June, and we're also saying if you need us to be at your hearing, we will for sure be at your hearing. We, we for sure want to share with you many legal arguments that we've learned so that when we show up to your hearing, it's going to be uh, a hearing where you'll be successful, and the whole society will be successful. Because a right abused for one is a right abused for all. Absolutely. Uh, keep going. How much minutes you got here, Joe? Can we, can we can't we can tell? I'd like to get the owner of these chairs to give a plug to them. To the Portino restaurant right next door. He said that they use organic food. Let me see if I can get it out. You know, the best I could do for you to sit, I was going to get one of these guys to help me carry one of those newspaper dispensers. Oh, man. <laughs> this guy was a total with... gentleman, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring it back. I'll come back next Saturday. I'll bring a CD for him. The wife wants to go in the plaque. That's very nice. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. Yeah, real good. Yeah, people. I just want to here often? He's such a nice guy. I hope he comes We're out. I'm be not here. sure if no, he will because he's kind of busy. And he said maybe we'll take the, the camera in. Thing. But well, the reason but I'm excited to get him in front of the camera is because I feel if we have better media, better media is going to support the community better. And small businesses are being threatened by high rents, all of these bailouts, none of it's going to small business. It's not only not going to the borrowers, it's it's not helping the entire economy. The entire economy actually is getting worse. Somebody told me that the U.S. was giving $32 billion to Greece. Why? All of those loans were insured by the five big banks. Why don't the banks stand up and honor their commitments? Why are we 
who is a country that's already struggling, why are we giving Greece 32 billion? And I don't have anything against Greeks. I'm part Greek. You know, my cousins are out there. My point is, we should play by the rules. If, if we're being dragged into courts and they're citing us laws that they're saying that we've broken, when we turn it around and show them that we have not broken those laws and there aren't any harm parties, they should play cricket fairly. So that's my comment. Do you have anything to say? You've been no, such a, a nice, like attentive person. Well, you're on television now. You're very interesting people. Why did you come here today? I was attracted by him singing and playing his guitar. And I like music. So I stopped by to check the music. Two minutes too fast. Two minutes too fast. I find out that uh, people's case is very strong. I mean, we're trying to argue against the system. Have you ever heard of these arguments? Mm -hmm. That there's, that there's no harm party, therefore there's no jurisdiction. Not really. I know. Not really. But I know they don't play fair. The mm -hmm. system of courts. Right. You know, they're, they're abused to people, the poor people, and they're abused to people. And, uh, I don't know. Most people are too frightened to go to court. Yes, and they the are. The very frightened. thought of it, they want somebody to buffer the unpleasant experience so they get lawyers. And that's part of the problem. The lawyers belong to the bar, and the bar is a union more or less to obstruct the natural course of justice. And a judge should be completely impartial. He should just be listening to two parties complaining about their... It's called contestuous. It's a contestuous event. And a judge is impartial and he decides which party is right and which party needs the remedy that they're seeking. So the harmed person will say, this happened to me and this is the remedy. Like, we're trying to figure out what's the remedy that we want for our rights being abused. And that's part of the problem of why they won't let us go, because if they just let us go, they have a big lawsuit on their hands. Absolutely. And that's why we need a lot of publicity Absolutely. for right. people to show up. Uh, sometimes the judges are not fair, they corrupted themselves. It's like I said, you need people for them to see and hear all these cases, the, the illegal things that they do to the people, to the, to the poor people in America. When you say the judge has corrupted himself, uh, they're supposed to be a, a, re a, a remedy for that. That's called recuse. If you tell a judge that, well, you know one of these parties or you have a vested interest in the outcome, then the judge should recuse himself. That's another lawful method. But again, if you don't know how to ask for it, they're not going to offer it. Absolutely. When you don't have a clue of knowledge of law, it's like, you know, they're corrupted. They, they, you know. Do you watch Manhattan Neighborhood Network community television? No, I don't. Know. And if you get a lawyer, this is something they don't tell you in court that all the people out in television land should know. If you get a lawyer, it's the same as if you were a crazy person in the nut house, and they bring you out in the court. Well, if you're a, a, a crazy person, you can't speak for yourself. Right. So they give you a lawyer. Yes. Now you become a ward of the court, yes. right? So any time you get a lawyer, they don't tell you, you are a ward of the court. And you can't speak for yourself, even if the lawyer isn't, is, isn't given the full information. If he's leaving something out in your argument, you can't, you can't say, wait a minute, he forgot something. The judge will shut you up. Absolutely, because he's part of corruption. Right. right, and then it's part of the lawyer, the prosecutor, and the judge deciding what they're going to do with you. Right? Absolutely. So, what do you think they're going to do with you if they're all about profit? <laughs> right. How many guesses do they need? <laughs> right. Well, not so the, money. They, they the, the best thing for people to do, in my opinion, because I can't give legal advice, that's illegal. The best thing for people to do, in my, in my opinion, is defend themselves because no one knows more about their case than them. But I recommend people to, to learn law because if you're going to go in there and fight with them, it's good to have some of the tools to fight with. Exactly. Absolutely. So anytime you get a lawyer, you're already in a game that you're set up to be a loser. Absolutely. A lawyer is, it, like for the marijuana law, if you went into court for a lawyer, a lawyer is never going to say, this law should have never been, we want this law thrown out, 
because if they throw out that law, then that lawyer loses clients. Absolutely. So he's never going to try to show the, 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 the bullshit. Interest. Absolutely. Right. So what he's going to do is try to talk a deal and say, well, okay, how much can we pick your pockets for? Right. Exactly. How much will you plead guilty to this and just pay a big fine? And if you're not willing to pay a big fine, well, then we're going to put you in jail for a long time. Exactly. And most people go for the shakedown. It's like the mafia saying, if you don't pay us money, your store's going to get on absolutely, fire. Absolutely. It's the same thing. Yes. I know. It's the same old story. That's why the Constitution, you know, it's over 200 years old, but it's still relevant. Yeah, but we don't expect our government or our courts to be the mafia. <laughs> but they are. They are. They are. They are. Yes, they are. <laughs> okay. Oh, Very I nice. want to thank you, but you're going to be you're on welcome. Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Great. Right. So on nice. channel 34 at 12 noon, I come out every day. Can you write it you down for me? you give me a uh, card, I'll tell you exactly which great. episode. Okay. Because uh, I want to, it's like a reminder. Sometimes I forget a lot of things. It's just nice right. you're walking by and paying thank such you. careful attention. You can That's tell right. when people are And we busy. love the people on the street. I like, I like yeah. to pay attention because... <laughs> Okay. Um, let me see. Do you need that? Yeah, I need that. Yeah, let me give you another card. Or something. You should write it down for him because we're so flaky, we'll forget to get in touch with him or we'll lose his card. This is your card? Yes, yes, my mother was. Uh, they did the service for my mother to this, in this funeral home in Brooklyn. I work on the one next to it, Mr. Recouver Funeral Home. That's my, uh, okay, those are cigars that I work for them people. So I can reach you here by calling that No, number? don't, don't. No, do write that down, write I don't down. Have a pen. Right. Write it down. You got a pen? Here, you, you work this pen? out and let me get these guys because here while we work with. Philip gets a little, he thinks it's the FBI after him. Yeah, Philip is that type of person, you know. So what do you think? Joe and Joe, we got three Joes here. Well, you know, I got carried away with the fact that his band is. Uh, Would you go away? Jesus, Jacob, and Joseph. I got a pen. Oh, here's a pen. Here's a pen. So, what do you think, Joe? I was explaining that I had figured out a solution to the justice problem as words from a song that is sung by Jacob in Genesis 49, oh. in which they say that uh, no, no, I'm the way to make the Aquarian age happen right. is to appreciate that those people born under the sign of Aquarius have such a gift for being judges that when we just make a bunch of Aquarians our judges, we're going to have the Aquarian age. Is he, are you an Aquarian, Joe? I'm a Gemini. I don't know what my my partner Jacob is. But I know he's a very talented individual. Uh -huh. <laughs> a young man, 20 years old. He has a. Yes, he has, he's born with the name Jacob. He was born with the name Jacob, and he was born with a lot of old knowledge. And I, I sit next to him. I can't get over the fact that I'm talking to a 20 year old. I mean, he sees things that most 20 year olds don't, and he writes. You'll hear the, you'll hear some of his his lyrics. I'm writing some of the melodies, and he's writing some of the melodies too. But his lyrics are so profound, and he has a big—he has a big, um, a big faith. He's, he's a very religious uh, young man. Therefore, we went with Jesus, Jacob, and Joseph. I'm Joe. He's Jake. Well, in the, in the song by Jacob, uh -huh. when he gets to Joseph, yes, he said, "You are a tree with your roots by the river, uh -huh. but your branches extending over the wall." Wow, beautiful description. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful poem. A beautiful poem. What did you think, Joe Friendly, of, of Joe Elmo's song? Because you you like more visuals rather than music. And well, what do you what do you think is needed to galvanize sort of? A, you talk about withdrawing consent. Well, no, I like his complaint. He's complaining that our system cheats with the truth by favoring the rich. They do. And they say what makes the rich happy as part of the corruption of our whole communication system. So I'm glad to hear that he is um, profoundly aware of how wrong things are. Thank you, John. And the, um, the cure is tricky. It's like it's, the public has been scratching their head saying, when is the Occupy people going to give us what they want? And what we do want is 
such a fundamental change of a message. You were saying before, Joe, that you believe that um, the whole system is flawed and it needs a renovation. I believe that they need, to, I really do believe that our courts and, and our Congress and our two parties, our political parties, they're not what we need. I think right. we need. I think we need different. I think we need the Green Party. I think we need some sort of independent party. And I think the Republicans and the Democrats have had their best day. And their best day was when they when they um, wrote these documents when Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin agreed and George Washington was riding his horse and chopping down his cherry tree. And there was some great ideals, and there were men who meant what they said and said what they meant and and acted, but. As it went on, now Congress is going to serve on in, in our Congress, where it used to be a volunteer. They're getting paid. They can go. They can actually request to be paid in advance. The only job where you can go into a job and get two months in advance salary. That's, I read that. Now, any place we work, as 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 laborers or uh, even in uh, for corporations, they're not going to give us a day. Uh, they might give you a bonus at Christmas when you make them a million dollars and give you a buck. But, um, these, I mean, our, our political system is skewed. Why Why are they getting paid? Why do they have light health insurance for the rest of their lives? And why does, you know, um, Pelosi, Pelosi's daughter make a document, a, 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 a documentary on people that are on SSD or DSS, pardon me, and are going hungry Living across oh, the, oh, the way from Disneyland, these children are starving. Okay, they're eating food that's making them uh, sick. <laughs> and she's making, she's profiting from this, and it's not changing. And, every, and we're sitting the citizens and like just you know, without without us speaking to these <laughs> these both these parties and telling them we've had it, we see it, it's a charade. And we know we're being cheated, and I, that's. Do what you the think it's hopeless? No. You don't. So I, do you? Because I think some people think that Joe and I are martyrs. That no. This, that this can't be done. No, I don't think it helps. I think, I think the solution lies in the legal um, arguments. I really do, because I can listen. I, where I come from, I can fight you, roll up my sleeves and fight you, but it's not going to get me anywhere. But you can do what? I can roll up my sleeves and fight you, but it's not going to get me anywhere. You know, it's going to get me arrested, and I should be. You know, violence is not the answer. You know, we, we've seen it. It's only going to we're going to repeat ourselves if we, if we live in a violent. Uh, re, we have a violent revolution. All but, it, but it's really only violence, the threat of violence, that's getting me and Joe to go back there. It's not their legal arguments. It's uh, no, not, because it's not that we they're, think they're not that bright. <laughs> well, they are pretty. What do you think, Joe, about the courts? I mean, you know that Joe Barton and I are not anti-law. Oh. I think our courts are due for replacement, just as our government is due for replacement, as just as our political process is a charade, as you said. We don't Thank have you. an actual democracy. We don't have but we actual never had choices. A no. We, we had a republic. We have, we all, we don't have much power left in the people. We don't have much sense of uh, our government being a matter of people, our so-called representatives, are not representing us. That's no. what it is. They're but representing if, if, the if, you, were to, if you were to come They're to bribery a... bribery rules, meaning that yes. it's a money game pretending to be a representation game. But when you're such a nice, polite, well-mannered person, when you come to a hearing, don't you want to think the best of the judge, that he is going to move forward lawfully? Isn't it kind of painful, particularly for somebody like you? It's painful for, the for record. Me. For the Paul Gloria, Joe Barton record, I hereby announce Joe Friendly that I am, JD that I am, that were the judge to be offered a deal in which what we're asking him to do is to make a public statement that the marijuana laws are a arbitrary, politically motivated demonization of the flowers of the hemp plant. And humanity has evolved in harmony with the hemp plant, but it is a 
further example of the degeneracy of our civilization, our government, our American way of life and all the rest. It has been part of the drift of our country to right-wing fascism mm -hmm. that they have demonized marijuana and thereby oppressed the people who found benefit from marijuana to think outside of the box, to see beyond the business think that has prevailed in our culture, to get into the authority of their own senses, and for the judge to say, yes, you are correct. There is, in this case, laws which arbitrarily demonize marijuana in this case, at, at the sacrifice at it's the sacrifice okay. of fundamental, constitutionally protected individual rights, the right to think your thoughts, the right to fuck your fucks, <laughs> to sex your sexes, to indulge in sex with the added uh, benefit of marijuana turning on even more of your sexual awareness. The But we didn't even need to go there. We are just saying, who did we harm? Right. On so many levels, um, to demand that no law is valid except that it can be shown it harms somebody is a pretty ambitious requirement of our legal system. Why? At this point, our Congress does not see that limitation when they pass laws, when they are criminal laws. They uh, say Congress you're offending the authority? state, whatever that means. You're offending, it's an offense of the state. That's their. their I think it's but that's supposed to be a statute just for their own corporation. It's like like uh, we our dollar bills are debt notes. It's internal currency for their corporation. For example, when you speed your car, the the victim is the general idea of public safety, right? That's you don't really point to a victim. So they say they just have to give you the answer safety, right? Right. Or like like with the street sweeper comes by, I can see if you don't move your car and the street sweeper can't clean, yeah, then you should get a ticket because you're helping dirty when you streets. Don't, when you, when you, um, but anyhow, uh, so would you like the judge to be offered a deal that if he were to just say the law is arbitrarily demonization of marijuana and therefore it is constitutionally invalid, and therefore there's no case, and therefore you don't have to plead because there's no law to plead to. But, but that wasn't our issue. We said there's no harm party. Right. And that statutes don't apply to sovereigns. And if now, you have no 50 harm, rulings, means 50 cases. Now, no come. harm party is a subset of the argument in justification of the claim that the unconstitutionality is a violation of the right of liberty. Liberty is free to act except as you would harm a party. Right. So you're making basically a liberty argument and therefore you're basically challenging constitutionality of the law as infringing on your liberty. Right. So there you go, that's the Joe Friendly wording of what you're doing, but hey, come on, you're not doing that. You're not doing the Joe Friendly thing. If you want to get busted yourself, Joe Friendly, then you can have your chance to argue that stuff, but we're not going to go there, so to speak, which is unfortunately the situation. So you think that we could get a judge that's going to come out and say that the law on marijuana is unconstitutional? Because you it think, is you think a judge politically is do motivated. That? But, but when the political motivation is no more $10,000 a day... There's just no more science left to the rationale for marijuana. It just Unless we're legal fictions, then that has no medical value for a corporation. If we're viewed as a corporation, that's just a bottom line, why they could say there's no medicinal value. Because a corporation doesn't need... No. Are we expecting... Yes. Oh, we are, you are expecting saying... to be here tonight? Uh, Actually, no, I come by, I live right down oh. the street, and I come by, and I just stop there. You want to be on camera and say what you think about this place? Oh, tell me about it. How yeah. long, you live down the block, and how long have you come here, and what do you come to see and do at the Yippie Cafe? Well, I come down here, the coffee's good, the people are decent. Uh, when I come in, I'm able to plug in and charge my phone or my computer up while I'm 
take care of business. So it's a nice business. casual atmosphere, relaxed? At, very, very. The people are good. I mean, the atmosphere is so easy. You walk in, you can feel the warm and homely feeling when you walk in the door. Do it's, you know Pie Man? No. Aaron? Not by He's that name. He's been here a lot. He was one of the original yippies. When did you first start coming to the yippie uh, cafe? About almost a year now. Oh, so not that long. No. So when you do come, you like to have a stimulating conversation? Uh, a lot of times there is some really good conversation because people are not talking about the trash. They're talking about the, the things of the world, you know. Right. What's going on in the world, the price of this, the price of that. Uh, you can pretty much find out any type of information you need coming here because the people do talk about everything. There's no one particular particular subject. So it's a stimulating place. Huh? Very, very. What, what's your profession? What do you do here in the city? I build Why homes. You oh, you're a contractor. I build homes wow. and uh, got hurt on the job, so I um, got laid off about maybe a year ago. I'm on SSI, but uh -huh. I come down here, like I said, I come down here, conversation, and just to be here with some of the people makes you feel wanted, makes you feel good. That's it great. really does. Well, thank you. Have a great night. Yeah, and watch us on Manhattan Neighborhood Network at 12 noon, Community Affairs Channel. All right, thank huh? you. So what did you learn in the restaurant? I learned that these people are very nice people. Uh, the name of the place would be? Oh, Quartina. Quartina. Do they like the yippies? I got a, I got a sense they do. Yeah, no, I did too. <laughs> and that's a good thing. I know, oh. I just like to say um, that if, if you like anything about the song, Please listen to Joe and Paula and Joe Friendly and come to the events. We need to stop what's happening because right. what we permit, we allow. We're right. being, I, I, you asked me before if I thought there was, uh, there was hope. Yes, there is hope. Right. But if we don't communicate to each other and communicate it to our, our Congress, our senators, our local politicians that we, we see through the game, we see how the, stack, the deck is stacked, and we're not going to take it anymore. Do it in a very legal way, in a very peaceful way. It's the only way we can win. Listen, it's been set up for a number of years. We tried it when the counterculture came in in the 60s, and they were they were they mocked them for the drugs. Yeah, we went a little too far sometimes with the drugs, the hallucinogenics. But we're not we're not tripping anymore. We're, you know. You know something. Psychedelics maybe got a bum rap because you should see the pharmaceutical uh, psychoactive or. The things they're giving crazy people. I now, know they're giving. People. I've worked. I've it's done some. It's frightening. Somewhere. People gain 300 pounds and their bodies are misshapen. And if they weren't depressed before, after decades of no sex life, because they're 300 pounds. Absolutely. Then they're hooked. I'm working with the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. I'm trying. I'm trying to bring programs to Green County, upstate, for quality of life programs because I've known people that are bipolar and schizophrenic. Right. Okay. And they try to create, and a lot of them are very talented. Some of them aren't talented, but aren't as talented as they think they are. But it enhances their life, and it makes the American citizens that are uh, disabled, emotional. And and I think part of that is what you're saying. The pharmaceuticals that feed them make them more um, vulnerable to uh, depression and 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 counter acts. You know, our, our, the way our brains work with the chemistry. So it's catch-22. The big pharmaceutical companies, they're getting rich. Right. And our people are getting locked in hospitals. They're making money. To, when they put them in a the hospital, they're making money. I when they put them in jails. I know. They securitize and those I think events. what I really believe them is, it's like, it's like the courts. It's, it's only about let's make money from the majority of the people, the masses, while we, the elite, who are running this country illegally, and I think it's illegal. That's why I think that that's where the, that, that's where the fight, you know, with Occupy Wall Street should be focusing on the illegalities of what's happening. Joe, you're the lawyer. <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> bribery is basically criminal. Mm -hmm. Bribery is what? A criminal thing to do. But you got to pin it. And to call it campaign contributions is uh, a charade that uh, it's bribery. It is. Uh, to give money for somebody's future. Well, right now, it's kind of funny that the Chamber of Commerce submitted papers to the High Court saying that uh, 
they have to prove that money has a uh, bad influence on politics. Oh, please. They had to do a study? <laughs>